So hi guys, so welcome to part two of our excursion into limits. And today I'll just look at some delectable, delectable examples. Very straightforward, direct substitution in the case zero over zero. So let's get stuck into it right away. So direct substitution, well be a function. So if you have a look at this beautiful S shaped graph, Y equals to X cubed. Now have a look at this, the limit of x cubed as x approaches zero. What is that? Now take a closer look and see that. So if you get closer and closer to zero from the left, what does it mean? It means the limit of x cubed as x approaches zero from the left. And you notice that we get closer and closer to y equal to zero. So that's zero. The limit of x cubed as x approaches 0 from the right, not 0 to the power plus. What does that even mean? So this would go this way. And as we get closer and closer to 0 from the right of 0, we notice that the limit is 0. So we can see that the limit of that function x cubed as x approaches 0 is 0. Pretty straightforward. Whoa, look at this beautiful, beautiful cubic function over here. The limit. Let's have a look. Uh, let's take a value like 2. All right, so we see the limit of f of x as x approaches. Now have a look at this. Let's do this uh, using one-sided limits. So if you approach 2 from the left, if you're approaching 2 from the left, and as we get closer and closer to 2, what's happening to the function? What's happening to the function? It's getting closer to 2. Uh, so it says here, if you look very carefully, the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 minus, is two. Oh, that's a mangoish color, but not very, very, there we go, readable. And let's look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 plus. Now we're going from the right hand side of 2 and you're getting closer and closer. There's 2 over there. Notice what's happening. Notice what's happening. We're approaching that value. Why am I saying 2? Yes, that is correct. That is not 2. So 2. Let's double check that. That's minus 2 cubed. That's 8. 12. 12 minus 8. That's 4, 4 minus 2 is 2. Graph is not drawn very well, very well, but you can see that approximately the scaling here would give you 2. Now, what's interesting about this, and this is what I'm trying to emphasize over here, is the following. When you are looking for a limit, say, for instance, the limit of minus x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2 as x approaches 2, just do a direct substitution. Okay, I'm gonna write that there. Direct substitution. So let's write that. That becomes the limit. And this is minus two cubed plus three into two squared minus two as x approaches two. And have a look at that. What is that equal to? Minus two cubed, that's minus eight. Two squared is four plus four times three is twelve minus 2. And that answer is actually 2. There we go. Okay. So the first thing when I look at limits, I do a direct substitution. If everything is well behaved and smooth like this red curve you see there, you'd expect to find a well behaved finite limit, which we've seen over here as 2. So step one, direct substitution. If everything is powerful, smooth, well behaved, lovely, cute number. Bang. Limit exists. Let's try another one. <laughs> what a beautiful function over here. Now, let's have a look at that. That's x. That goes like x squared and that goes like x cubed. So this is a sixth order polynomial. So f of x sort of goes like x to the power 6. Ooh, look at this curve. Beautiful. But I want to know the limit of f of x as x tends to zero. So first thing, 
direct substitution. If you go with direct substitution, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero. So what do we get? It's minus two squared, that's four. Four times three is 12, and that's it. So I can say the limit of f of x is 12. Now if you look at this graph, at x equal to zero, you see that? It's 12. And the reason why I'm so confident that it is, is because all polynomials are continuously smooth and well behaved. I can actually draw this curve without lifting my pen. Look at that. That's amazing. So when you do a direct substitution and your and you turn out uh, or you churn out, let's put it that way, a finite beautiful number like 12, then we know that the function is well defined as we approach x equal to, in fact, not even approaching x equal to, in this case, the function is defined at x equal to zero. And I'm pointing and I'm edging closer to the idea of a continuous function. Hoo hoo, what is this? Oh yeah, I was trying to draw this curve, so this is y, that's x, and let's put something like y equals to x plus one, okay? So now my question is, what is the limit of this function, x plus one, this function, as x approaches zero? And you think, oh man, that's a stupid question. But you notice that x approaches zero, direct substitution, and that tells me that it's one, okay? So if x is one, then the scaling is not very, very right. So I mean, if you go here, there's one over there, and you'd expect if you go up there onto the graph and this value, not a bad scale uh, used there. So the function itself is well defined everywhere. Notice that orange line, I can draw it without lifting my pen up. So I can tell you that the function is continuous. I'm gonna keep using that word, continuous. So the limit there, finite value is one. No deeper thoughts. Aha, what do we have here? Now, let's have a look at this function. Let's look at the limit of x squared minus 1 all over x minus 1 as x approaches 1. And you see there's a problem in the denominator. So you just put there um, x equal to 1 and you realize you've got a 0 over 0 case. And this is how I keep track of things. Now, 0 over 0 is not 1. <laughs> it's not 1. So the next thing I do is, the moment I'm faced with this um, not so pretty, or what I like to call an unpretty case, uh, let me write, that's a beautiful word, unpretty case, then the first thing I would look at, one, step one, can I factorize things? And if I look here, so this becomes the limit, haha, the top, x minus one into x plus one all over x minus one as x approaches one. So that goes away. And really what we're looking for is the limit of x plus one as x approaches one. I put that there is two. So if you look very carefully here, uh, that's one scaling again. So we'd expect that this to approach two. Now notice, this is very important. As I approach one from the left, the function gets closer and closer to the value two. As approach one from the right, the function approaches closer and closer to two. But it's not not defined at x equal to one. There's a singularity there. There's a big hole there, a black hole, and it's gobbling up stuff. So we have a singularity. And we remembered when we looked at limits, the function need not be defined at a as it approaches choose a then limit of f of x is equal to l so f of a need not exist so this is a beautiful beautiful example so we're adding on when we see limits what do we do step one do a direct substitution if everything is well behaved we get a finite beautiful number boom that's the limit two if we face with the problem in limits we do a direct substitution and we get an unpretty number like zero over zero. First thing is we factorize and if we're able to factorize boom get a finite limit boom that's the answer awesome
Okay, let's have a look at this one. The limit of x cubed minus 1 all over x minus 1 as x approaches 1. <laughs> so straight away, a direct substitution. What actually happens there? Direct substitution, we got 0 over 0. Mm -mm, not good at all. Step 2, look to see if we can factorize. And we suddenly look up there and we say, hey, this is a difference of 2 cubes. And what is that? That is x minus 1. If you remember, x squared plus x plus 1 all over x minus 1. Let's double check that. That's x cubed minus x squared plus x squared. I'm just double checking. Yep, all over. And that would cancel that as x approaches 1. Then do a direct substitution for x equal to 1 there. So this is really nothing more than the limit of x squared plus x plus 1 as x approaches 1. And for as sure as God made beautiful apples, that is 1 plus 1 plus 1. The answer is 3. Yoo Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so let's take a closer look at uh, this problem over here. What do you think of this one? So it's the limit of x cubed plus 1 all over x plus 1 as x approaches minus 1. Direct substitution. Oops, we have a problem. 0 over 0. Okay, so next thing we factorize and we suddenly realize that the numerator is the sum of two cubes, which can be factorized as x plus one into now notice there's a sign change over here. All over x plus one. Beautiful as x approaches minus one. So that becomes just the limit as x approaches minus one. X squared minus x plus one. That's just your general quadratic and direct substitution there. That's minus 1. That's squared. Minus 1 squared is plus 1. And then you've got a minus 1 there. Minus, there's a 3. Just double check that. So minus 1 squared. That's plus 1. Minus into minus 1. That's plus 1. <laughs> 3. Now, let's try something else. Watch this. The limit of x cubed plus 1 all over x plus 1 as x approaches <laughs> how's that what's the answer to this one so now we're approaching 1 from the left of 1 so a direct substitution there that's 1 plus 1 that's 2 all over 2 equals 1 <laughs> please take a note left of 1 minus one big difference okay now have a look at this graph now if you remind yourself this is f of x equals to one over x now interestingly as i approach zero from the right so you'll see straight away that the limit of this function f of x as x approaches zero from the right is what the graph just shoots up to infinity and beyond so well not intersecting so this becomes plus infinity and if you look at the limit of f of x as x approaches zero minus right zero minus the graph just shoots down to minus infinity so what can we say about the limit of f of x as x approaches zero <laughs> does not exist how cool is that well that's pretty straightforward right pretty straightforward so the question we ask ourselves do we always need the sketch no we don't need the sketch you know, you've got to think about these asymptotic limits you've got to think about you know, the behavior about a certain value as we approach from the left as we approach from the right and that's the important thing here cool stuff man okay so let's have a look at this very interesting function over here so we've got f of x is equal to 1 over x squared. Now, it's interesting. If you have a look here, it says that the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the right, as we are closer and closer to zero, the function that shoots up to positive infinity. So this is plus infinity. Now, if you have a look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 minus, so from the right, uh, sorry, from the left, from the left, from the left, this shoots up to positive infinity. So you tell me, what is the limit 
of f of x as x approaches zero. Think about that. Okay, a slight shift here. This looks like f of x. You see a vertical asymptote. So that gives me x minus two. If you have a look very carefully, so the limit of f of x as x approaches two plus, not plus two. Uh, approaching there, the graph this shoots up to plus infinity, and then we got the limit f of x as x approaches two minus. That means from the left, you can see the graph this shoots down to minus infinity. So you tell me what is the limit of f of x as x approaches two. Okay. So I thought this was a pretty awesome uh, lesson. And what have we learned here? So when we faced with the limit of f of x as x approaches a, step one, direct substitution. Right, get a nice beautiful number, bang. Function is well behaved, continuous. And um, so there we have the limit, two. And then we have these, what you call unpretty values like zero over zero. Well, what do we do next? Straight away, we go and try to factorize, right? Things cancel out, makes the function beautiful, makes the function pretty. Do a direct substitution then. Do you get a finite number? Is there something else we can do? So up to this point, direct substitution, if it's unpretty, factorize. What's next?